Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This video is the fourth in a playlist on regression. The first three were about the concepts of covariance, correlation, and sums of squares, which are prerequisites for understanding regression. This video will specifically refer to concepts covered in the videos on correlation coefficient and sums of squares. Three of these videos are identified with the arrowhead type of bullet, that is simple linear regression, multiple linear regression, and simple nonlinear regression. These are the three types of regression analysis covered in the book and in these videos. A fourth type, multiple nonlinear, is beyond the scope of this book and these videos. See statisticsfromatoz.com slash videos for the latest status of my videos. As usual in the book and in these videos, we'll go quickly through a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs, to give you the overall picture on one page. And then we'll go on to detailed explanations of each of the keys. For this video, there are five KTUs. The first key to understanding tells us that the purpose of regression analysis is to develop a cause and effect model in the form of an equation, y equals f of x, or y equals f of x1, x2, dot dot xk. This model predicts what future, that is yet to be collected, data will look like. The model is validated or invalidated in designed experiments, which is a separate discipline. The second KTU stay, states, first plot the data, then perform a correlation analysis. Only perform a simple linear regression if there is moderately strong correlation between the variables. The third key says simple linear regression fits a line y equals bx plus a to two-dimensional xy data. The fourth key says the best fit regression line is the line with the smallest value of the sum of squares error SSE. The fifth and final key to understanding says the coefficient of determination, uppercase r squared, is a measure of how well the regression model fits the data. r squared equals SSR divided by SST, which equals 1 minus SSE divided by SST, which in turn equals lowercase r squared. And here on one page are the five keys to understanding simple linear regression. You may wish to pause the video at this time to read them all together. The first part of key to understanding number one says, the purpose of regression analysis is to develop a cause and effect model in the form of an equation y equals f of x or y equals f of x1, x2, dot, 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 xk. The x or the x's are the causes, the y is the effect. If the function f describes a line, then we have linear regression. Linear regression can be either simple or multiple. Simple linear regression has only one x. Simple linear regression is the focus of this regression part two video. Multiple linear regression has two or more x's, Multiple linear regression will be the subject of the regression part 3 video. The second part of key number 1 says, the regression model predicts what future, that is yet to be collected data, will be like. It is validated or invalidated in designed experiments. The equation y equals f of x, or y equals f of x1, x2, and so on, is called a model. A model should accurately predict future results. That is, if we have a new x value which is not part of the original data set, 
we can use y equals f of x to calculate the value of y for that x. This would be a prediction since we have not yet collected data on that new value of x. Once we do collect that data, a good model would pre provide a value for f of the new x, which is close to the actual value. There's a whole discipline called design of experiments, or DOE, devoted to designing what data to collect and how to test in order to prove that the model is accurate or not. DOE is a fairly complicated concept. It is the subject of a three video play playlist, which I will do in the future. This being statistics, it would not be confusing enough to just have one consistent pair of terms for the x and y variables. So, different experts and authors use different terms for the same thing. This table attempts to show associated pairs of terms for x and y. Independent and dependent obviously go together, as do cause and effect. Some authors use outcome variable with predictor variables. Variable others use response variable. And some use explanatory variable and criterion variable. KTU number two starts out by saying, first plot the data, then perform a correlation analysis. The video, Correlation Part 2, is a prerequisite for this video. In that video, we stressed the importance of plotting the data. Use a scatter plot like these to plot y versus x. The plot on the left looks roughly linear, but the one on the right is definitely not. And yet, they both have similar values for the linear correlation coefficient r. The plot on the right shows us that we need to use nonlinear regression, which will fit a polynomial curve to the data. If the plot does show a roughly linear correlation, we then go on to calculate the correlation coefficient, denoted by a lowercase r. There must be at least a moderately strong or negative correlation, a not moderately strong positive or strong negative correlation to proceed to performing regression. That is, r must be greater than or equal to 0 0.5 or less than or equal to negative 0 0.5. Key to understanding number three says, simple linear regression fits a line to two-dimensional xy data. The equation describing the line is y equals bx plus a. y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable. b is the slope and a is the y-intercept. The diagram at bottom left shows two lines with a slope of 1. One line has a y-intercept of 2, the other has a y-intercept of 1. The y-intercept or just intercept, denoted by the constant a, describes where the line intercepts the y-axis. It is the value of y for which x equals 0. In the diagram at lower right, the slope, denoted by the constant b, describes the slant of the line. At the top of this slide is the formula for the slope b. This may look somewhat reminiscent of the formulas used in correlation. In fact, with a little algebraic manipulation, it can be rewritten in terms of the correlation coefficient r and the standard deviations of x and y. That is the second formula shown. Below that is the formula for the y-intercept. Now, the y-intercept does not always have a physical meaning. In the graph at the bottom, we show some data on height and weight of people. The line through the data is extended to the left until it intercepts the y-axis at x equals 0. This is the point at which the height of a person would be 0, and that of course is meaningless. Key to understanding number 4 says, the best fit regression line is the line with the smallest value of the sum of squares error, SSE. There are a number of methods for calculating a line which best fits the data. The one most commonly used is the least squares method. As explained in the regression part one article, sum of squares error, SSE, is the variation in y which is not modeled by the regression line. 
The line with the smallest value of SSE is the regression line. It is also called the best fit line or the line of least squares. The regression line always passes through the point whose x and y values are the means of all the data points, that is, through the point x bar, y bar. Key number five says, the coefficient of determination, which is denoted by uppercase r squared, is a measure of how well the regression model fits the data. Uppercase r squared equals SSR divided by SST, which equals 1 minus SSE divided by SST, which equals lowercase r squared. In the previous video, regression part 1, sum of squares, we described how sum of squares total SST is calculated. Then we showed how sum of squares error SSE is calculated. We could then use SSE and SST to calculate SSR. SSR equals 1 minus SSE divided by SST. We can then calculate uppercase R squared equals SSR divided by SST. In the correlation part 1 video, we described lowercase r squared, the correlation coefficient. This is a measure of linear correlation, and we see that uppercase r squared is equal to lowercase r squared. Here's an example. A regression model has SST equals 100, SSE equals 20, and SSR equals 80. The proportion of the total variation in the variable y, which is explained by the regression model, is SSR divided by SST equals 80 over 100 equals 80 percent. The proportion of the total variation in the variable y, which is not explained by the regression model, is what's left. SSE divided by SST equals 1 minus SSR divided by SST, which equals 20 percent. Uppercase r squared is called the coefficient of determination. r squared equals SSR divided by SST. The coefficient of correlation, lowercase r squared, can be shown to also equal SSR divided by SST. So in simple linear regression, a measure of the goodness of fit of a regression model is equal to a measure of correlation of the two lines. In this video, we have referred to two previous videos in this playlist. You can also see here the next videos which are planned at this point. The one listed last, ANOVA versus Regression, was completed a while ago as part of the playlist on ANOVA. For the latest status of my videos, please see the videos page of the book's website. Okay, that concludes our clarification of the concept of simple linear regression. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me that more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromadoz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromatoz.com slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter is at Stats A to Z.